Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well today. Uh, this summer, I had the pleasure of working with Dr. Wolfgang Lokzert um, and my advisor Esteban on analyzing microtubule dynamics via end binding proteins. Before I begin on uh, discussing what my project was about, I'm going to give a little background on what microtubules are. So microtubules are these tube-like structures found in pretty much all living cells. And they're often found uh, playing a pivotal role in the, form, the formation of the cell and giving it, it, the cells its shape. They also play a role in, in the... <clears throat> They also play a role in the um, in cell division, where they help with the transport of chromosomes into the, its daughter cells. And another little neat feature about microtubules is that they 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 grow through periods of growth and shrinkage. Now, with the N-binding proteins, however, they form at the ends of microtubules, and they regulate that the microtubules' growth and and or shrinkage. And from the schematic here, you can see that the like the gray and white little parts uh, cylindrical structure are, is the microtubule, and the red little portions are known as the tip proteins or the end binding proteins. So, my project was to I was I was given a uh a cell, which is a Chinese hamster ovary cell, which is used often to test different uh, like uh, biochemical processes. Like in such case, they as a target for cancer drugs. And here in this video, that what we're tracking is the tips, the the end binding proteins essentially, and. So how we did that was uh, we used a, a Python package known as TrackPy, which is uh, uses a particle tracking algorithm to locate blob-like features in a video and and um, and and track them over time. So again, I have the video playing here of the uh, cell that we used, and following that is where. Uh, we annotated the various tips in the in the, in a frame, so those circles are marking essentially all the uh, all the uh, tracks. And what it does, it creates the next image, which is all the, essentially all the trajectories that are in in that given frame. And it each color represents a particle, a separate particle. And that final last image is a verification of the tracks. Okay, so one of the first things we wanted to analyze was the straightness of the track. And what we mean by straightness is its displacement, the, the, uh, the direction and the difference between the uh, final and its initial point divided by its path length, which is um, how long the distance traveled and the and the straightness can tell us how much force is being applied to the uh, tips whether that be external or maybe internal and i want to give an example of what what i mean by straightness because their um, straightness is calculated on a scale between 0 and 1 where 1 is a perfect straight line so right here we have a graph of my uh, of the cell's displacements, uh, where the x-axis is the x position, and the y-axis is the y position of the uh, trajectories. And I have two specific uh, tracks highlighted. So this first purple track is what is would be considered about a straightness about zero point nine or so, uh, very close to one. And uh, this next one, the brown one, essentially is about as 
try, uh, a straightness of around uh, 0 0.5 or so. So it's still like not super straight, but very like, probably like straight, but dented. So uh, what we did was we uh, took all the tracks, which is about, about 1,200 tracks, and we created a distribution of the straightness. Uh, and from this just, and we expected to get like a pretty uh, non-linear um, or non-normal distribution because of how sporadic the tracks are. And in this cell alone, we could see that a good chunk of them are like relatively close to straight, but not particularly exactly straight. Like not, no tracks were actually like completely straight. Another one, another analysis we wanted to do was track the velocities. Uh, the velocities uh, tell us how much resistance the tracks are facing. And uh, like a little bit, as you can see here, uh, like a less resistance, a less velocity would mean a higher resistance. And this one seems to experience some resistance, a fair amount of resistance, possibly due to a barrier or, or some other means. And Okay, so to wrap up, essentially, we uh, my project was on tra tracking uh, the tip proteins of micro that form at the ends of microtubules using TrapPi, and doing analyses on both the straightness and the velocities, which can give us an insight on how the formation, uh, how rapidly the microtubules are growing, and how much. Uh, how rapidly the cell is forming its shape. And some possible next steps is to determine what forces are acting upon uh, the, the uh, proteins and the microtubules, as this was originally supposed to be a, oh, it is a video, okay. Um, <laughs> um, so uh, when a force we could uh, assume is a motor protein, which you, you see in this little video here of it walking on top of a microtubule. Uh, or it could possibly be an internal force because microtubules also provide a pushing force as well. Uh, and uh, we uh, possibly we hope to do it with uh, the same pretty much analyses on um, more uh, cells. We had like a good chunk of cells, about uh, 15 cells, but we we had this uh, one that had the most analyses on it, and we hope to probably do maybe statistical analyses, like what kind of distributions we get from the histograms. I just my literature cited. Thank you. <laughs>